call the uh, meeting of the Norfolk Public School Committee for June 12, 2023 to order. Um, we'll begin the meeting as we do all of our meetings by reading the mission statement. The Norfolk Public Schools offers a safe, joyful, and challenging learning environment that meets the needs of our diverse students. Through school, family, and community partnerships, we provide an education that inspires lifelong learners and cultivates caring and productive citizens of our ever-changing world. Um, roll call, please. Lisa Sheldon. Grace Lockhead. Lauren Vives. Victoria Soldano. Barry Nectel. Ingrid Alardi. And Medora Champagne. Um, <clears throat> so we are gonna go slightly out of order when we get to my part of the festivities, but we will begin um, as we do with public comment, where any member of the public can make a statement about something within the purview of the school committee. I don't see anybody jumping up to make a comment, so we will move on to the second item on our agenda, which is correspondence, of which we have none, none. so not a lot of communication with the committee happening this evening, but <laughs> moving on to... The next item, um, school committee chair report. Uh, we have a few things on the agenda. Again, I'm gonna go slightly out of order. Um, so we will begin with item number two under my agenda, which is the gift fund. Um, we have several gifts um, coming in at the end of the year. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, one from the Norfolk PTO, $450 from the Coin Wars, um, of which we have a co Coin Wars general here on the committee <laughs> as well. It wasn't um, a war, it was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, another from the PTO for $800 um, to go towards uh, chorus stipends at FK. Um, another from the NCL Charitable Fund, $700. Um, it's an NCL grant for the makerspace at the Freeman Kennedy School. Another $700 grant from NCL uh, for a math specialist grant at the HOD. So the total gifts this evening are $2,650. Um, could I get a motion to approve the gifts as stated? So moved. Second. All right, any further discussion? Just Above thank you. and beyond. <laughs> thank you very much to both the PTO and NCL. Generous <laughs> um, oh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, motion <laughs> passes. Um, a couple other uh, non-voting but housekeeping items. The feasibility report for the proposed expansion of the Freeman Kennedy School um, has been completed by AI3. Um, they went above and beyond to complete that in a very tight time frame, so we're certainly um, thrilled that it has been generated and finalized so quickly. Um, it is available on the school website. Is that Not yet, because we're just making sure there's no further edits, but it's available to any committee member that would like to read it while we finalize, any, finalize the draft, and then it will be on the website. Okay, fantastic. Um, I'm sure there will be more to come on that proposal in the coming months and going into the fall, so. Stay tuned. Um, finally, before we jump back to item one, uh, we are coming up on the uh, time of year when we have to undertake the superintendent evaluation process. So for the new members of the committee, every year uh, Ingrid is subject to a annual evaluation process. Um, we have typically used a form that is, I believe, part of our packet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a pretty standard ranking form. Um, we need to have each member of the committee complete one of the forms and then return the completed form to me. Um, the time frame for this is that we would I would appreciate getting the completed forms back by mid to late July so that I can aggregate everything and have a final kind of committee-wide report um, at some point in August. Yeah. It's generally when we try to wrap it up and then we go through a dialogue around the evaluation at a committee meeting typically in early September, is that? August or September. August or yep. September, okay. Um, so I can forward the forms to everyone with some kind of outlines of dates and expectations and you can get them back to me at your earliest convenience. Great. Not sure. the due date would be great. Um, All right. right. So I think you can go on to the retiree. You she's almost here? Okay. Yeah. Waiting on one more person who wants to weigh in on item number one, but we can begin. So we 
have two retirements that as a school committee we are going to be recognizing this evening. Um, I have some prepared statements so that I don't forget anything because I don't like to go off the cuff with these because I often forget things. So um, the two individuals, uh, well I will begin with the first um, retiree uh, is Julie Gallagher. Um, Um, so, Julie Gallagher's long and wonderfully rich career has always been in early childhood education. From the time Ms. Gallagher earned her Bachelor of Science degree from Wheelock College and her Master's degree from American International College, she has dedicated her entire teaching career to the youngest of students. Ms. G taught in early childhood and preschool programs at the Accept Collaborative, the Medfield Public Schools, and the Newton Public Schools. In the fall of 1992, Norfolk welcomed Ms. G to our staff, and she quickly became our preschool program's heart and soul. Julie's dedication to her profession and to the children and families she serves is incredible. Her classroom is a joyful place, with children actively engaged in exploring their world through music, art, movement, dramatic play, literature, and social interaction. Julie has strong diagnostic skills and she is able to skillfully design learning experiences that capitalize on children's interests and are playful and fun. If you have ever had the pleasure of attending a special concert or performance in her class, you have seen the best of early childhood programming and can understand why her students love coming to school. So, round of applause. Items from the committee. <laughs> so this will well outlast the flowers. This is for all the free time you'll have in the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have a uh, had the most wonderful career here, 31 years in Norfolk, and um, it really has been my home and my family, and uh, I'm, I might have maybe prematurely retired now, <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I know you're thinking, like, how could she retire? She's so young. <laughs> but sometimes you have to do what you have to do, so I will miss every day with my students. Not all, I won't miss all parts of teaching. <laughs> I have never um, not wanted to come to school and be with my students. So thank you very, very much for having me today. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Julie, we also have someone from the town coming that has something to read for you, so we'll have you back up in a minute. Okay. We're going. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so you can do it twice. <laughs> really? You don't have to do the speech again. What are those publishers clearing? <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so big. It's a truck. <laughs> okay, um, I need to take a deep breath for this one. Um, our, oh. Um, our next retiree, uh, much to the dismay of many, many people in town, I'm sure, um, is Mrs. Linda Balfour. Um, Mrs. Balfour began her career in Norfolk as a second grade teacher in August of 1972. She later transitioned to a special education resource teacher position and eventually as a part-time special education coordinator. In 1990, Mrs. Balfour led, left the classroom and became a full-time administrator, serving as the part-time assistant principal for the Freeman Centennial School and part-time special education coordinator. She was appointed to the principalship of the HLF Day School in June of 1993 and was there to open the doors of the new school building on January 10, 1994. For the past 30 years, Mrs. Balfour has provided strong, child-centered leadership to the H. Olive Day School. In 2019, Mrs. Balfour was honored with the Thomas C. Passios Massachusetts Elementary School Principal of the Year Award, which was presented to her at the National Distinguished Principals Convention in Washington, D.C. Mrs. Balfour has been a pioneer in the field of social-emotional learning. She brought the Open Circle curriculum to the H. Olive Day School over 25 years ago, long before SEL learning was in vogue. 
Mrs. Balfour has continually emphasized the importance of building supportive relationships and teaching students the social emotional skills they need to successfully navigate their worlds. Her commitment to promoting civic responsibility and citizenship and her passion for teaching children to be good stewards of, of our natural resources have become part of the identity and culture at the H. Olive Day School. Over the course of her career, Mrs. Balfour has touched the lives of thousands of students and positively impacted the future of our next generation. Her leadership, compassion, and dedication will be missed by students, staff, parents, and the community at large. We wish her the best upon her retirement and celebrate her success in shaping the H. Olive Day School into the outstanding educational institution it is today. In addition, the Norfolk School Committee would like to share that they will be donating $250 to book purchases for the eye care program in Mrs. Balfour's honor. We will be working with school librarian and adjustment counselors to select the titles over the next few weeks. So thank you, Mrs. Balfour. It seems that she's not teach and uh, be an administrator in, this, in uh, this district for so many years. As I've said several times, and some of you probably heard me say this, you know, when I, uh, I grew up in Boston, I went to Boston College, and I had every intention of teaching in Boston. And then um, I had a fellowship all lined up at BC, and all of a sudden I hit the wall and said, I can't I can't be in the library one more minute, because that was before the internet and everything uh, online. So I said, oh, I think I'll look for like a teaching job, someplace different from where I've been before. <laughs> and happened to know someone who lived in Norfolk and came out here and go, wow, <laughs> I can't believe this is within commuting distance of Boston, you know, <laughs> because it was so, so different from everything. So I came here with every intention of staying for a year and then going back. And, um, and I just kind of fell in love with the community, with the people that I was teaching with at the time. We formed our own little group uh, in second grade that uh, started our own little grade level meetings and things like that. And uh, we had Miss H. Olive Day herself was our <laughs> principal back then. And she was a very, very traditional person, very traditional. And, um, but with Miss Day, you always knew exactly where you stood. You knew what was expected, what was not expected, and um, she really promoted that whole feeling of excellence, I think, uh, in the town that we have continued as a tradition. So I've, uh, I, I've enjoyed my journey. I've, I've loved working with the, um, you know, uh, superintendents who have encouraged me along the way, because I never wanted to be an administrator, ever. And probably most administrators say that at one point, right? But you were kind of encouraged to, to take that step because they saw something in you. And I know that the superintendent that convinced me said, well, why, why don't you want to give this a try, you know, to be special needs coordinator? And I said, because I really think I'm good at what I do. I really love to like, peel the onion and find out how do kids learn? What makes this child tick? You know, why aren't they learning in the traditional way? And uh, he said, okay, so he said, so you do that with your 25 kids, but if you were administrative, you could do it with so many more and you could influence the department and where we go. And that was back in, you know, chapter 766 hadn't been around all that long, the special education law. So he was the person that sort of first convinced me to do that. And then going to the principalship, I was like, oh, I really like working with all these special needs kids. And it was kind of like, well, here you, a brand new school, you have the opportunity to create the school that you want. And I thought, okay, so that sounds appealing because you could create a school that you wanted to go to, that you wanted your children to go to, that I wanted my students to be in. And that's where the whole um, 
basis of you know social emotional learning came in because we knew that kids needed to feel safe and secure and happy and loved in order to learn effectively so i so i took on that challenge too and we created hod together i mean julie was one of the founding people of hod she came over from freeman centennial and uh, we, we formed our school family right from the beginning, right, Jewel? And so, um, so I always say I don't give myself credit for that much other than just wanting to have a happy, safe school where kids felt successful and the teachers did too. But I, uh, I will give myself credit for selecting good people. And those good people, Julie, <laughs> is uh, a prime example who has been with us. You know, I was special needs coordinator, I know I'm talking too long. <laughs> I was special needs coordinator, and <laughs> oh, go on. <laughs> and Julie was actually a teacher at Project Accept, and in those days we didn't have all of our own in-house programs. So we had a child with some complex needs that needed a specialized program, and he was placed in Julie's program after I kind of shopped around. And I used to go visit and say like, wow, She's a great teacher, you know. <laughs> I would love to, if we ha ever have a program like that of our own, I, I would love it if she was interested. And she was. <laughs> and so then she came to join the HL Day School and we started, out, well no, she, the Freeman Centennial School at the time. And then we started our own preschool program from there. And it's just started from, integrating. Hmm? And then we started integrating. Yeah. Which wasn't really right. a big thing. For right. a long time, and it's been the best thing that could ever happen. So, um, yeah, because we had a self-contained program at that time, and, and then we integrated. You came along, and then which you came along, and uh, yeah. so uh, so it's been wonderful. And I also got to pick people like Susan Key, <laughs> Sue Key, Paula Burns, Paula, <laughs> Carolyn Kelly. <laughs> Anita Mecklenburg, who was my assistant principal for many years, and uh, we uh, we just did so much together. I think we did a lot of good things together. And then came COVID, and everything changed, right? But anyway, we we got through that. I just love COVID. He <laughs> <laughs> did. Yeah. Well, you could kind of do your own thing, right? <laughs> Sometimes, but. Um, but anyway, when we did, uh, when we had uh, COVID come along, that, that brought us even closer together as a school family because we all had to get through it together. We were navigating uncharted waters and uh, we just had to come up with unique ways to do it. And I was so glad that uh, Ingrid was our superintendent to uh, navigate that, uh, those waters with us because we certainly didn't know what we were doing all the time, did we? But, but we certainly hope that I never have to do it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But we figured it out. So, and as I said, at um, when I when I got the award, the uh, Basios uh, Award, um, I said, you know, this is us. It wasn't an award for me. It was an award for what we had done together, what we had created at HOD, and I still I feel that way every single day. I just look around and say, I'm so lucky. So don't cry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now we have someone coming on board, Tammy, mm -hmm. who I spent the day with last Tuesday, so I know we're in good hands. The you know the school family will continue and our traditions will continue and it's all good because I'm indoctrinating her. <laughs> <laughs> Festivities are not complete. Stay in your seat. Um, <laughs> from the town side of, of our happy equation here, we have a select person, Anita Mecklenburg, uh, mm -hmm. to speak about our retirees. Thank you. Should I? Should I? I'm just going to continue on with Linda. And yep. You I'll might go. have to come to a mic. Donna, does she need to come to the mic for you? Please. Right up here. Right here. Yeah. There you Thank go. you. Pull up the chair. So I'm just going to wax on. Um, <laughs> I just want to share two Linda Balfour memories before I read the proclamations from the select board of the town and 
one of the, right after I was hired, I was brand new, I had, didn't know what I was doing, I'm a brand new administrator, and we had a family, a student in particular, in crisis. And so we were in the conference room, it was, I was new at the job and still very, very much learning, and we were in, and I had to fight back tears because it was so much what you wanted schools to be. It's like, what can we do? And Linda was the one who led the way and said, what does this child need? And everybody at the table is like, they need this, they need this. Okay, how can we make that happen? What do we need to do for this? And I literally had to fight back tears about, um, it's like, this is what you dream the perfect school would be. And that was Linda leading the way. Mm -hmm. And then another memory I want to share is very early on, she also leaned over and said, so, how do you feel about dressing up? <laughs> <laughs> And we dressed up a lot, and we really led the way with joyful rigor in, at H. Olive Day School as well. And so I have a proclamation from the select board in the town of Norfolk. Whereas, I don't know, I'm in this weird, should I have glasses or not? Whereas Linda Balfour, principal of the H. Olive Day School, has served the Norfolk Public Schools for 51 years and has been an outstanding educational leader whose work has positively impacted thousands of Norfolk children over the course of her career. And whereas Linda Balfour was actively involved in overseeing the planning, construction, and opening of the new HLF Day School, welcoming the first class of the students in January 1994, and has since that time worked to establish a culture within the school that promotes civic responsibility and citizenship and teaches children to be good stewards of our natural resources. And whereas Linda Balfour's accomplishments in the district have included serving as a pioneer in the field of social emotional learning, promoting the importance of building supportive relationships and teaching students the interpersonal self-awareness and relationship skills they need to successfully navigate their worlds. And whereas Linda Balfour regularly fosters high expectations for teaching and learning while maintaining a developing appropriate child-centered learning environment and was honored for her professional efforts in the 2019 with the Thomas C. Pascius um, Massachusetts Elementary School Principal of the Year Award. And whereas we, the Norfolk Select Board, issued this proclama proclamation to Linda Balfour in recognition for her many years of service to the Norfolk Public Schools, serving for the last 30 years as the principal of the H. Olive Day School. And Julie Gallagher was my neighbor. My, my office was right there. And it was always so lovely because you just never knew if somebody walking out of the classroom would be wearing a princess dress and a fireman's hat. And <laughs> just such a joyful place of learning in Julie Gallagher's room. And so we have a proclamation for Julie Gallagher as well. Whereas Julie Gallagher, preschool teacher at the H. Olive Day School, has served the Norfolk Public Schools for 31 years and has been an inspiring educator who has welcomed many students into public school and has ensured a positive start to their educational journey. And whereas Julie Gallagher has skillfully created a joyful classroom environment with children actively engaged in exploring their world through music, art, movement, dramatic play, literature, and discovery. And whereas Julie Gallagher has fostered an inclusive learning environment that meets the diverse needs of learners and actively engages parents and families as partners in their child's learning. And whereas Julie Gallagher has supported the professional learning and growth of many paraprofessional staff members and colleagues and regularly contributes to district committees and school improvement efforts. And now, therefore, we, the Norfolk School Board, a select board, excuse me, issued this proclamation to Julie Gallagher in recognition of her 31 years of service as a preschool teacher at the H. Olive Day School.
since the school committee chair report. That's <laughs> <laughs> a good one today. Thank you all again. But moving on to Ingrid. Yeah, congratulations to both Lynn and Julie. Um, we look forward to continued celebrations that are planned in the, in the coming weeks, but uh, wanted to have a chance to recognize you at the committee. So thank you for joining us. Anita thing coming in hot with the proclamations. Well, I was I, I had timed it really well, except for I didn't have the proclamations in my car, so there was the... Ah, uh, there you go. go All right, well, thank you. Yes. <coughs> All right, first up on our report tonight uh, is budget, so I'll turn it over to Barry to talk about closing out the fiscal 23 year um, with budget transfers and the budget update. Yep, thank you. Uh, we're going to do the, the, the uh, uh, transfers <laughs> first, so it's... Uh, <laughs> Because this will be riveting, but we'll watch it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Thank you. Barry is his traveling show. He can just come to HOD and present. <laughs> <laughs> really enjoy it. The students would love it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to give him a chance to go, or should yeah, I? Yeah. Okay. Barry, would you please turn your microphone? Oh, yeah. Need a picture. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Let's get after it. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so uh, during the course of the year, uh, as we go through the uh, expenditures, uh, we realize that uh, we um, uh, underspend um, some budget lines and we overspend others. And there's a school committee policy that says within the budget, um, we can move unspent funds around to uh, balance uh, lines that we've uh, overspent. It's a normal course of business. Uh, so um, we're uh, asking your approval to transfer 126,500 from um, uh, salary lines um, and 12,500 from uh, maintenance lines totaling 139,000. Um, again, those are just normal course of, of business. Uh, on the salary side, it's uh, uh, maybe a position that we didn't fill or when we did fill it, they might have started late. Um, um, and then on the maintenance side, it's just funds that we budgeted and ultimately didn't, didn't uh, use. Um, so we're proposing to transfer the budget uh, dollars over to three lines, uh, 8,000 to the superintendent uh, line 23,500 to transportation, m primarily special education that, that was a little over budget, and then some out of district tuition totaling 107,500. So those are intra operating budget uh, transfers. We're also asking for uh, two transfers uh, of expenses from the operating budget to revolving accounts, um, and that's uh, 35,000 of uh, food service salary. Those are the uh, uh, cafeteria monitors uh, that we pay to uh, to monitor in the in, in the uh, in the cafeteria during lunch, and then uh, about twenty six thousand dollars of custodian salary, and that salary that was paid out of the operating budget, but really belongs in food service because of the work that gets done in and around the cafeteria during uh, meals, uh, cleaning up trash, and ex uh, things of that nature. That totals about $60,000, and again, that's expense that will move out of the operating budget into, uh, the, two, uh, into the revolving account. Uh, so uh, that's what we have uh, that we're uh, asking for your approval for now. Um, maybe in the next meeting, whenever that might be, uh, we'll, we may have uh, a little bit more as we do some year-end planning that I'll talk about in the next uh, uh, item. And just uh, before we move to vote, um, <coughs> a couple of things that I wanted to highlight. Uh, the 8,000 is the cost of the consultant for the superintendent, uh, for the superintendent search, for the <laughs> HL of the principal search. Um, also, this year, uh, we, in the past, we have operated at a, in a deficit for our food service, for our food service program. And typically, we're coming to the school committee at this time to ask you to transfer money to offset the deficit to balance the food service budget. 
the last few years, because of the COVID pandemic, there have been federal reimbursements and meals have been free for all students. So for the first time, we actually are ending the year with a pretty healthy balance in, in that account because participation's been up and uh, we're receiving that federal um, funding for the program. As a result, um, as Barry said, we have some unexpected costs, so we are looking to, to mitigate some of those costs by charging the food service account to offset some of the salary costs this year. Um, it's not probably a long-term uh, opportunity for us uh, because it, it is, isn't clear at this point whether meals will be free next year. Um, if it goes back to uh, where students are paying for meals, then we won't have the kind of revenue that we have this year. So that's still uncertain. It's still being decided at the state level. But given that we do have the balance this year, um, we're recommending that so that we can better manage the end of year costs. So do we so want to vote on that first? Yeah. And then we'll yes, please. Yes. A motion to um, approve the fiscal year 2023 budget transfers as described by Barry. Thank you, I'll move to um, approve the 2023 budget transfers. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, the next item is, um, is a projection of where we will end up at the end of the year for this fiscal year. And um, I, I'll, let me walk through it and then I'll talk a little bit about the context. Um, so we have, um, we have a, a operating budget of uh, $14,442,000 um, and to date we've spent um, Eleven thousand eight hundred and eighty-five thousand. Um, so that to date means million. eleven million. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So, um, so this is as of five thirty-one, and and um, those of you that have been on the committee for a while will always hear me say, everything on this page will change and already has. This is where it looked um, last week when I put this exhibit together, where we're going to end up at year end. There's. Um, spending that uh, we are aware of that hadn't been <coughs> spent um, totaling two million five hundred and fifty four thousand most of which is salary that um, we owe that uh, just hadn't been paid yet the biggest um, amount is a million eight and change of the uh, teachers lump sum salary that gets paid to them um, actually this Thursday um, and that's uh, salary that's owed to them uh, based on their, their contractual obligations. It's five paychecks that they ordinarily would um, get over the summer, but we accelerate that and pay them out before the end of the fiscal year, um, are all earned through the last day of school. Um, and then um, there's a pay period that happens to occur this week as well, so that's an, another sort of scheduled salary amount of about 700000 and then miscellaneous non-salary expenditures of 27800 So those are all identified expenditures um, between now uh, and the end of the fiscal year, mostly this week. Um, the two transfers listed next are the ones we just discussed, moving expense out of the operating budget into the revolving account. So it frees up operating do budget dollars, um, giving us um, available budget by the end of the fiscal year of $63,000. So we are proposing uh, that we prepay some of fiscal 24's tuition, which would free up budget dollars in the next fiscal year, fiscal 24, uh, to be used for what, whatever we, you, decide to use it for. We don't have to decide that today. Um, but this is just the idea is that we're going to free up some budget dollars um, and use it to prepay tuition wherever that number lands. Again, today it says 63,000, tomorrow it'll be something different. Um, so, but it does give us the ability to pull tuition into this fiscal year and the law allows us, it's really one of the only expenditures that you can prepay um, from one fiscal year dollars to cover expenses in the next. Um, is, uh, is collaborative tuition and there's a cap on it, a per student cap of three months tuition. Um, and it's really nice 
little tool that districts can use to kind of manage a couple years budgets. So what we're proposing is that where that number lands, um, somewhere in this vicinity, we'll use to prepay tuition, um, creating some um, uh, budget dollars available for uh, next year to cover w whatever you decide to cover. And I think uh, we met with the budget subcommittee a little bit earlier. Um, the fiscal picture for, for 24 is a little bit uncertain. Um, we had built into the budget for special ed an anticipated 50,000 in revenue um, for students that were placed, uh, planned to be attending Norfolk schools who are not. So our revenue projections we know at this time are down 50,000, which is part of why we're thinking about prepaying those tuitions to offset that loss of revenue. Um, we also, uh, enrollment is variable, so we're watching that closely. We have been working with the town, and when we passed the budget, they assured us if their revenue came in higher than uh, what they were anticipating, that they would look to restore some funding to the schools in the fall. So I think at this time, um, we're not recommending allocating this additional fund. As Barry said, we'll look at that later in the summer um, because of that loss of revenue. We want to watch some other factors before we make any further commitments. Uh, but this allows us to not enter in, a, in, in the negative. Uh, and again, we have this one-time opportunity, really, with the balance in food service to charge appropriate costs to food service versus the operating. So um, I think what we, we also said, Barry, when you when you put the projections together, it was about 63,000. I think we've had some additional bills come in since then, so it might go yep. down or up a little bit. Yep. So just so you know, it's not a set amount. And I think what we'd be looking for for a motion is to allow us to use any un remaining unspent budget dollars to prepay to the maximum allowable event, uh, capacity collaborative right. placement tuitions for the fall. So we're looking for a motion to prepay collaborative tuitions within the allowable amounts pursuant to statutes and regulations. <laughs> so moved. A second. <laughs> Any further discussion? No. I, I think it's a great plan, yeah. um, just knowing the budget picture that we all went through um, Agreed. across the winter, um, that if there's any way we, we have some cushion to leave this year and head into next year um, without a deficit, it's fantastic so. and unexpected. So, yeah. Okay. Um, did we actually vote all those in favor? Hi. Thanks. All right, next you have at our last school committee meeting, we discussed keeping the meeting schedule the same. So it would be the uh, second Tuesday of the month. Um, I can see typically the August move meeting we move back um, and it's the week before school. So I would propose amending that the August meeting to the 22nd. Um, and that way we can give a school opening report. We can share with you any on op um, open positions, things like that. Um, but other than that, we generally meet the second Tuesday of the month, um, and that's what's in the proposed schedule. Okay, we get a motion to approve the proposed meeting schedule. With the revision of the August 22nd meeting date. With the noted revision. <laughs> so moved. Second? Second. All right, any further discussion? No. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, at our last meeting, we talked about the, the school committee's responsible for uh, appointing annually the school nurse and the school physician. I brought you a recommendation for the Freeman Kennedy School Nurse. We were still working on the uh, appointment for the HL of Day. Um, at this point, we have a school nurse, uh, Kathy Steck, who's been working with us, point six. She has emergency licensure from the Department of Ed, but is a fully certified licensed RN. Um, and I would recommend that the committee reappoint her um, pending her extension of that licensure. Um, she has to, the, the state is actually re-looking at the licensure requirements for, uh, for school nurses. There's a critical nursing shortage and in order for a school nurse to get licensure, even though they're fully certified by the state and may have many years of experience, they have to have two years of ex experience as a school nurse and they have to pass the MTELs. Um, so Kathy's in the process of doing all of that. I think those requirements may be waived by Desi. Um, uh, that was what was shared at the last um, commissioner's meeting because so many people have a shortage that, that if they're a fully licensed RN, they may be eligible for a provisional license. So 
As long as the licensure is resolved, I would recommend appointing Cassie, Kathy Steck to the point six position, and Ann Hurley has agreed to continue on point four um, for one more year. So I recommend appointing Ann Hurley as the point four nurse and Kathy Steck pending licensure. So looking for a motion to make the school nurse appointments as to H. Olive Day and Freeman Kennedy as described by Ingrid. So moved. So moved. Sorry, can we get a second? <laughs> second. Right. Any further discussion? Um, can I just, what's the time frame um, that it will take for her to get fully to become? All she needs to do is, she just registered to take the MTILs. That's the, I think, the last okay. step. And I think, as I said, they were vote, the Board of Ed in Massachusetts is voting at their next meeting okay. to offer a provisional license to nurses. So she may not even need to go through that route. And so if that changes or when she gets that, will this potentially change or are we no, going she, for the then whole? She'll, as long as you vote to approve her pending licensure, once, she's, once she gets that settled, she will be appointed as a point six. But stay as a point six for the year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's what she's looking to work for next year. Okay. And thank you, Mrs. Hurley. I know she keeps trying to leave. I know. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Hurley. <laughs> we do, because it's a really hard position to fill right now. We are desperately looking for a summer school nurse. If anyone knows anyone, you probably got the email last week, but it's a hard position to fill. And they're great. They do a great job for us. Um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next, Vicki, do you want to talk about the extended day? Sure. So, um, that would be Exhibit 8. Um, so over the last couple of years, um, we have been looking at our time of learning. And um, we've discovered that after polling um, our um, alike districts, there's a chart that is at the end of the memo, that we offer one of the shortest um, time of learnings in our comparable um, districts. So in order to, um, upon more acceleration, there's a lot of um, obstacles that having a shorter school day obviously presents such as you know um, it really does limit our ability to be able to um, uh, meet our, our um, time and learning minutes for, for, for the different curriculum areas and um, I think ex so sorry so one of the things that we're kind of looking at is to be able to um, extend the school year by 10 minutes to make us more comparable with the other um, towns in, in our area so in order um, when we kind of took a closer look we we um, realized that um, to be able to add the 10 minutes um, which is not going to have significant impact um, on um, other aspects such as busing that we looked at um, and um, it's going to really give us a much bigger benefit for our schools. Um, one of the things that we'll be able to do, it'll give us an extra 50 minutes a week, which really does add up at the end of the school year. Um, we'll be able to not only in, have increased instructional time by um, um, giving us a little bit more opportunities to be able to really offer um, a more robust um, learning environment for our students with the state um, always coming out with um, like more rigorous expectations which are fantastic but to be able to prepare our students for going through the different grade levels and entering middle school and high school um, one of the things that we did find um, that we need is just be able to have more time during the school day to be able to address all of the needs our students have. So um, we put together just a couple of examples of some of the benefits. Obviously, um, it will give us more opportunities to um, give some more differentiated instruction for students. You know, it will um, be able to really take a look at our science and social studies time that we have right now. Um, that is always um, something that we struggle with to be able to fit into the school day. Um, and I know it seems like um, a minuscule amount, the 10 minutes a day, but like I said, it really does add up over the course of the week and over the course of the school year. Um, so the adjusted start time to be able to, uh, would be, uh, would shift from um, 8.55 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. The dismissal time will remain the same, so that will not be impacted. Um, if this plan was to be approved, it will begin on the first day, um, which is August 29th. Like I said, we talked, we've been in contact with the Homes Busing Company, and they've confirmed that that would not have any impact on the other districts that they work at, and they would be able to accommodate the 10 minute shift. Um, so I think that 
Um, so I think like we just want to kind of just share our kind of proposal with you at this time and just see if you have any questions um, about this. Yes. So um, it is something that we've been looking at for a long time. I think mm -hmm. our teachers do the best they can to, to fit mm -hmm. a lot in um, and every minute counts. Uh, so the opportunity to extend the day by 10 minutes, as Vicki said, has a cumulative impact in terms of what we can provide for instruction. Um, I have talked with Holmes in order to, before we move forward, we would need, we need to amend the contract we have with homes mm -hmm. for the busing. Mm -hmm. um, so Barry was working on drafting a memo of agreement um, to amend that contract. I would plan to bring that back to the school committee and then we would want to let the community know, but we need to finalize the busing um, and a few other mm -hmm. um, technical details, but we wanted to put it out so that people were aware that this mm -hmm. was being discussed and that we are working on trying to get this uh, finalized so that we could start next year with an, ex an extended school day, um, which again, will make us much more comparable with other, other districts. So this is just informational tonight and we can take any questions you might have, but it will have to come back for a vote in, in, over the summer. Do the teachers have to approve this as well? Or is They're aware, yeah, okay. we've already worked through that. How 30 minutes grow is in, in five minute increments. I know. <laughs> just straight 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 time. <laughs> Six hours, 14 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's an odd amount of time. That. Okay. Would the preschool time stay as discussed last time or would those yeah. also stay? At this point, yes. Yeah. Including the start time yes. at nine would stay. I, I, at this time, we haven't talked about a change to it to the pre K okay. schedule, yeah. And we do stagger that intentionally because of the overlap in transportation and drop off and it's really tight right now. So I, I expect it would stay as it is. Um, will this have any impact with morning SAC? I assume no, but. No, we would still offer the SAC program. The kids would just transition into it school just a little bit earlier. earlier. Okay. Yeah. And we will come with more information again to the next meeting um, and with a, a draft of an amended contract with Holmes. Um, and we, as we said, we're still working through some technical details, but just wanted to inform the committee that we're working on it. Some of you are aware, some of you are not, um, but just wanted to put it out to the public and, and yeah. we'll send further communication out once we have a vote and everything's finalized. I think it's awesome. As a parent yeah. of a child who does not get on the bus until 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are ready to go at 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> Get them out the door. Get them out. Yep. Until they're teenagers and then it's <laughs> hard to get them on the bus on time. All right, great. Uh, next in the packet, you have the quarterly bullying report. Again, per policy, I report to the committee every quarter the number of reports each building has received of bullying, um, the results of the investigation, and the outcome. So, at this point, there were no, uh, in the last quarter, there were no disciplinary issues or reports regarding bullying at the H. Olive Day School. There were three reports received at Freeman Kennedy. All three were investigated. We have very specific procedures we follow outlined in the plan that's published online. Um, and two of the reports were determined to meet the criteria for bullying. In those cases, appropriate disciplinary measures are taken. The um, administration meets with the um, students that are involved, develops a safety plan if necessary, um, and um, make sure that um, uh, that everything is followed according to our, our identified plans. Um, we do continue to provide comprehensive instruction in anti-bullying and social emotional learning, as we talked about earlier tonight. Um, and all grade levels have the second step curriculum for um, uh, anti-bullying prevention and we also supplement those with uh, lessons from the Mass Aggression Reduction Center or MARC. Um, so we continue to implement that, we continue to monitor and um, make improvements as, as we go along. Any questions? Okay. All right, um, Medora mentioned earlier that the school committee annually does an evaluation for me um, and you will fill out the form, send it to Medora, but I do provide the school committee with an update on my progress towards goals that you can use to help you um, with the evaluation uh, included in the packet and I can go through them quickly or you can read them. Um, you approved two year goals for me two years ago, so I'm at the end of the cycle. I'll be proposing new goals in October. Um, at this point, I feel that on, I actually added a fifth goal, which I probably shouldn't have done, but we finished it. Um, uh, I think we made really, st I've made strong progress. I expect all of the goals will be completed. A couple were delayed slightly, um, and I can talk about those, uh, but will be completed by the August school committee meeting. So professional practice goal was around strengthening recruiting. Um, we 
have, we've done a lot of different things. We have partnered uh, with Bridgewater State. We are gonna have several student teachers next year, which is great. We attended their fair. Um, there's some things that are ongoing. We are, um, we did conduct a market assessment of our sub rates. We made adjustments to make those more competitive, but we are still struggling as everybody in the area is to get substitute teachers. Um, we were struggling pre-COVID. Um, we had a lot of retirees that came and sub for us during COVID. Um, a lot of people coming to a school and working with a thousand children wasn't what you know people really wanted to do. Um, so it's been difficult. It's been hard on our teachers. Um, we are actively working and looking at incentives to try to get people to come to the district and stay in the district. Um, but that's that's something that is ongoing. Um, let me see. Uh, we, we, the other thing we want to look at, and we delayed it a little bit because of the financial situation in the district, um, but it will be, I think, part of our new strategic plan, is looking at a uh, potential possibility of, cre of creating a pipeline program for our paraprofessionals interested in getting licensure as teachers. Um, there's some financial cost to that, so we have to defer it, but I think as we're coming out of the difficult budget years, that's a really important thing to consider, so we're still working on that. Um, we completed the equity audit. Uh, this year, the focus really was on um, a couple of different things. One, we, we sent out a survey last spring um, to look at parents' perceptions of their students' experiences here at school. There were some themes that came, came out of that, areas of strength that we're gonna celebrate and recognize in the report, and there were some areas that we, um, I think we need to learn through and that we can improve in. Um, some were around our students with special uh, educational needs, feeling fully included in the school, parents feeling fully included in the school, um, there, there were a few other things. So we did focus groups with multiple groups of parents. Um, this, we, we spoke with the CPAC. We offered, uh, we sent out an email and offered individual interviews or small group interviews to any parent whose child is either receiving specialized services or is in the process of being evaluated. Um, so we conducted those interviews to try to better understand the experience and what we're doing well. That data will be added to the equity audit report. We also met with, um, uh, uh, parents of uh, students of color who to learn about their experiences and again to explore the themes that came out of the survey. So we are finalizing all the data from the focus groups to add to the equity audit report which also looked at attendance data, um, discipline data, uh, the parent family survey. Uh, there's a lot of other information in that to try to finalize our findings and recommendations. So. All of that's complete, the report's almost done. We're just tweaking and incorporating the focus group data and that will be uh, ready to present to the school committee in August. Um, and we're also thinking about the impact of some of those things and recommendations for um, adjustments we might wanna make as part of the strategic plan. Um, there's some overlap in, in data sources there. So we'll have that all ready for August. Um, let's see what that is. Oh, strategic planning's going really well. Um, again, that one, we, I will also have the full strategic plan ready to present to the committee in August. You approved the goals that we developed after, uh, I think we shared the SWOT analysis, mm -hmm. which was very data heavy to kind of wade through, but we came out with the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The strategic planning committee, we have three parent representatives, as well as teachers, mental health professionals, um, paraprofessionals, specialists. It's a pretty broad committee. Um, so they finished the SWOT analysis, they did the surveys. Um, they're, they're looking at some of the um, uh, uh, data from the focus groups as well. We presented the goals. Now we're in the action step planning and we are pacing action steps so that they're sustainable. So you can't have multiple major initiatives in one year um, that involve all the same groups of people. So we're in the process of pacing those. We have a meeting June 20th and then another July 18th, and then the plan will be complete and ready to bring forward to the committee. Um, student learning, the focus was really around uh, math. We were able to add in the operating budget the additional paraprofessional. Unfortunately, we had to cut that at the end of this year. We're hoping with some additional revenue to, to restore that position. Um, our students, I think you saw when we presented uh, the MCAS scores in December, we've seen some positive gains in math um, and are looking to see those continue. Um, I also included in the goals update, there's four standards that you have to evaluate me on in addition to progress towards goals. They're in the state performance rubric for superintendents, it's instructional leadership, management and operations. 
um, family and community engagement, and professional culture. So I just gave some examples of different things that I've been working on under each of the four standards. Um, it was a busy year. We had some unanticipated things, so that's why some things got moved. We had the principal search going on. We had um, contract negotiations. We had a feasibility study. So um, I think it's been a good year. I think we've accomplished a lot. Um, and I look forward to continuing and, and proposing new goals. So happy to answer any questions that anybody might have or um, provide additional information if you need it. That seems, as always, exhaustive and thorough. So <laughs> I was going to say very <laughs> thorough. <laughs> All right, as we, as I just mentioned, I'm, I'm saying we, but <laughs> my, my husband says, who's the we that's going to do that project? And the artist usually him. But anyways, <laughs> um, I would like to share that we have hired a new principal for the HL of Day. I've invited her to join us tonight and wanted to introduce Tammy Rebello. So Tammy, do you want to come up to the microphone? And <coughs> thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for welcoming me. As Vicki has shared and updated with the committee, it was a, a fairly exhaustive search. We had quite a few applicants. The uh, search committee did a great job with interviews and in the end uh, recommended Tammy. Uh, I had a chance to check all of her references and to interview her myself. I think she's going to be a great fit. So we are excited to welcome Tammy. She'll be starting on July 1st. And Tammy, I thought you could just introduce yourself and tell the committee a little bit about your prior experiences. Sure. So um, I'm leaving my 23rd year at the Taunton Public Schools. Um, it's been my home and my family, just as everyone else has described here about the HOD. Um, I started off as a special educator um, and did a lot of sub-separate work. I did a lot of work through MCAS, um, getting students really prepared for standardized testing. In the past eight years, I moved on to be um, an administrator in um, the elementary setting. So I did some of my special ed in the middle school setting and then uh, moved on as administrator in the um, elementary setting. Um, one of my focus um, over the past few years, since we have a very diverse district, we have um, a low economic status, um, a very large school, is that um, we really noticed that as the rigor was catching up in our district that the gaps were kind of getting bitter, bigger for some of our kiddos. Um, I am very student-centered um, and that kind of broke my heart when I was seeing those. Um, I'm a huge advocate of UDL and making sure that all students um, are getting their needs met, whether it's through curriculum or social emotional. My school, um, through my hard work, has actually been an example for others in the district. I've set up a huge um, kind of culture that we have um, places that the students can go if they need to regulate. I have places that the adults can go if they need to regulate. Um, and that has been really well, um, gone really well because as our demands kind of grow with our student body, um, it's important to make sure our adults feel just as supported with the more demands that we're putting on him, on them. So I'm very excited to come here. I, this was actually the only district I applied to. <laughs> I didn't, um, I don't need to leave, um, but I was really looking for my skills to be challenged a little bit more and in a different setting. And this school just spoke to me, this community spoke to me, um, everything that um, Linda was saying up here today, you know, I just kept nodding because I'm like, yes, that's what I'm all about. Um, and we kind of share those same beliefs and I'm, I'm hoping to continue her work. I know I have big shoes to follow, um, but I'm excited about the opportunity and um, it's been very welcoming so far, so I'm ready. <laughs> and as you said, Tammy will be joining and starting on July 1st. Um, she will have some transition time with Ms. Balfour uh, over the month of July, and then is I have her in a course for the last <laughs> week of July um, that we are working on a regional course. So she will be here and then ready to start the school year off strong oh, enough. Nice. So just wanted her to have the chance to meet the committee. I don't know if you guys want to introduce yourself because you'll be seeing her as uh, <laughs> she comes to present the school improvement plan and other things. So oh, perfect. Well, I'm Lauren. Um, I actually won't have a child in HOD next year, but the following year. I will, so <laughs> see you here and there. Nice to I'm Grace. Um, I also can't believe I won't have a kid in HOD next year, <laughs> but the following year I'll be back. So. You got um, to see you then. It's a real special place. You're going to love it. 
Um, Lisa, my oldest son, is a rising third grader, so he will be moving on, unfortunately. Right. To meet you, but I have a younger one who is going into first grade next year. Excellent. We're excited. Both of them love going to HOD. It's a special place, so welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Medora. I uh, have, you know, I'm terrified to say it out loud, high schooler. So um, <laughs> I'm still with you. He calls the <laughs> HOD library as one of his favorite places that he used to go to and have quiet and be allowed to be with his books. So that was a very fond memory there. And then I have a um, rising fifth grader, which is also terrifying to say out loud, um, who says that her one regret about school is that she didn't get to finish her first grade year. Like she didn't get the right first and second grade years at HOD because mm -hmm. she was out during COVID and then it was hybrid. Oh, no. just, I wish I'd had all those extra days so I could have been in the building. So clearly a place that all of the kids love. So. Excellent, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you so much for You're joining us welcome. today. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Welcome. All right, the last agenda item I have is to let the committee know that our business consultant, Barry, has told me he's going to really retire now. <laughs> he's retired. No. No. Times two. Don't do it. He's been with us for two years, done a fantastic job. Um, it's been great working with Barry. And uh, I think it's a different model in Norfolk um, because we have an assistant business manager and a consultant. There's a lot of things going on. Um, I know he's worked a lot more than we, we expected the position to have to work through the feasibility study. Um, it's just been a pleasure. He's made everything so much easier for all of the rest of us. Um, and I think he's going to have to come back for one more school committee because so. we have a little party gift that has not arrived yet. <laughs> and we have to close out the budget in July, but I wanted to let the committee know. Um, and we want to thank Barry for everything that he has done. Um, I, I was terrified when Todd left. I was like, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, and Barry has jumped in and, and <laughs> made my fears um, uh, go away. He's been a great, great resource. So thank you to Barry. Thanks. Thanks. That's, thanks for the kind words. And I should thank you and the school committee and Todd for giving me the opportunity. Is it, I, it's been a great fit for me. I retired the first time um, in uh, June of 21. And this was a nice uh, sort of uh, a way for me to, to keep, uh, keep busy and challenged. And uh, I think all of us know that work, that it really comes down to the people. Um, and your, your experience at work is always as good as your relationships are. And the people in Norfolk have just been fantastic. Ingrid, uh, as you know, has built a fantastic team. And um, I, I, I loved coming here every, every day. And, um, I'll miss everybody. It's been it's been a lot of fun. I'll be around for a little bit longer, and and then I'm going to re-retire. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And Barry nice. will be here to close out the year. Yeah. Um, so he's definitely given us lots of time and notice. So thank you to Barry. Thank you. And that's all I have, and I'll turn it back to you. Later. Okay. I think we're about to fly through these. Um, Jen is not here, so we have no King Philip. She's at the King Philip School Committee meeting, so mm -hmm. I'm sure she'll be happy to report back at our next. Scheduled event, um, <laughs> and the policy subcommittee meeting, uh, policy subcommittee rather, has not yet had a meeting, so we have little to report other than we're super excited. Can't so wait. We're <laughs> yeah, it's we'll have our first so. meeting usually in August. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the best. Um, so to close out the meeting, we have let's see, a um, set of minutes to approve from May twenty second. Assuming everyone had a chance to be. Superstar committee members and look those over before we mm -hmm. came today. If not, just raise your hand. We'll <laughs> identify who you are. No. And give you a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we just need a motion to approve the meeting minutes from May twenty second, twenty twenty three. When someone's ready, I'll move to approve the meeting minutes from May. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion or edits? Anything like that? No. no. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay. Next school committee meeting. We're going to have to set another meeting, um, probably for July. Um, we have been in negotiations with the Norfolk Teachers Association and settled the contract last week. Um, they are scheduled to uh, uh, review the contract and ratify the contract with their membership on Wednesday. And once that's complete, we will need to, as a school committee, meet to vote on accepting the contract. Um, so 
we'll probably have to set up a special meeting in July, and at that same time, hopefully, we can make a decision about the early um, extending uh, extending the school day. So I don't have a meeting date yet, um, but I will reach out to everybody, and we'll try to set something for July. Sure. And if need be, and it's critical, we can always make that a remote. Yeah, I think we I know can do that virtually. Scatters uh, from time to time. So. Okay. Fear not. Um, Okie dokie. So, last item on the agenda is I need someone to move to adjourn. I will move to adjourn. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Here, I have to. There we go. <laughs>